here's what I'd like us to do. I would like you to consider, and I know you can work this out immediately, but I want you to write it down with me. Consider four times, let's go with something like 15. Okay. Now, I wonder if you remembered when you were doing um, you know, multiplication early on, like in primary school, if you ever got shown that 4 times 15, you can think of it not just as a number, which, by the way, what is 4 times 15? It's just 60, right? You can think of it as a number, but you can also think of every multiplication between two things. You can also think of it as an area. Here's the way I'm going to write it. 4 times 15 is the same as 4 times 15. I'm going to break into a 10 and a 5. I'm going to take the 10s and I'm going to take the units out, okay? Now, what I'd love you to do with me, if you've got a ruler there, is can you draw for me a rectangle that represents this? 4, I'm going to call this 4 units high. And then I'm going to go 10, you can measure that across. And then I'm going to go, I'll just put some dots down there, and then I'm going to go another 5. So I'm going to call this 10 and this 5, okay? So what I'm going to form here is um, a couple of rectangles. It looks like so. Okay, now let's have a look at this together. I mean, you already kind of know the answer, but I want to show you why the answer is what it is. Where'd my orange go? Oh, where did my orange go? Here it is, okay. If I think of 4 times 10 plus 5, I can say it's kind of like the area of this rectangle. 4 times 10 plus 5. Okay, and so the whole rectangle kind of is in two pieces. Can anyone tell me this left hand piece, what's the area of this side? It's going to be 40, right? 4 times 10, it's just length times breadth, isn't it? 40. And then you've got this other smaller rectangle over here. It's not 4 times 10, it's 4 times 5, which gives you an answer of 20, which agrees with what we found before, right? The total area, 40 plus 20, gives you that 60, okay? Now, this is nice with numbers, but we can extend it to algebra because these pronumerals and things we're dealing with, they just kind of stand in the place of numbers. For example, if we said, uh, we had 4a minus 3, I'm going to change it. Uh, let's consider 4 with an a plus 3 instead. It's a little bit easier to conceive of if everything's addition. Can you draw for me the same rectangle, but just we're going to label it differently? Same rectangle, but this time I'm going to put some different numbers on it. I've got a 4 over here just like before, but instead of 10 and 5, which is what I had inside the bracket before, what shall I label on my tops here? A and 3. A and 3. Now, for anyone who looked at those ones before, the expansion is still a bit funny and confusing, right? Can you see how this gives us the two terms? It's why I'm distributing the 4 to the a and the 3. What's the area of this part here? 4a. It's 4a, very good. And then this leftover part, it's 4 times 3, which gives you 12. Thank you, Barabi. Okay. Now, this is another thing. We know how to do this already. You're like, I didn't need to draw a diagram in order to know the answer to these. But I can use this diagram to help me try out some more challenging things. Okay, now see how we've got some numbers here? And then we've got some algebra. In the same way, I want us to extend our numbers to be two digit. Okay, so see how we've got 4 times 15 here? I'm now going to try out 24 times 15. Now, you, could, you all did 4 times 15 just without, without thinking, right? 24 times 15, I think you could probably work out with some time, but it certainly doesn't jump out at me what that answer is immediately. But I can use that same model to help me out here. You know how I broke apart the 15 into 10 and 5? I can also break apart the 24, right? It's, well, how am I going to break it out? 20 and 4, my 10s and my units. 20 plus 4, like so, okay? Now I can use this, maybe you're like, I just worked out the answer, Ray, okay? I'm going to confirm whether the answer is what it is by drawing up another area model, another rectangle for myself, okay? This one's going to be a little bit taller. Now, so far we've been trying to make it so that the scale is reasonable. It's going to start to get a bit harder here. But I'm going to draw across like so. I've broken up my rectangle into more pieces because I've got 20 and 4. Then I've got 10 and 5. Is this ringing bells for you? You're like, I remember seeing this. I can work out each of those rectangles individually, which is much easier to do than um, doing the whole thing, 24 lots of 15 together. So. One at a time. 20 times 10, what's this biggest rectangle here? Um, 200. 200? 
200. How about 20? There's 20 again, times 5. It's going to be 100. And then I've done those two, so now I'll do the bottom two, which are actually, I kind of already did these before. I'm cheating by using easy numbers. This is still 4 times 10, so it's still 40. And this is still 4 times 5, so that's still 20. And so the total shape is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, all added together. Can someone tell me? 360, very good. So that's what 24 times 15 is equal to. Now I want you to think about what that might look like for something like this if it had not just four lots of a plus three, here's where we're going. What if I had, see that thing on the right hand side, this guy here? It's got two bits to it, two terms. So we call it, we give it a special name. It's called a binomial. Um, you've seen by already just means two and nomial means two terms, okay? So we're gonna try this. A plus one a plus 3. Now this is new and this is why we spent so much time developing this to make sure we know what's going on. This is just like what we did here, right? There's a binomial here, two terms, binomial here, two terms, and I'm going to multiply this out. So can you draw a nice big rectangle for me and we're going to work out all of the pieces. Hmm. Now, it actually doesn't matter which one you make which, but on this vertical length over here, I'm going to make that refer to this guy on the left-hand side, okay? So I've got two lengths here, right? One of them is going to be A, and the other one's going to be 1. So this height here is A plus 1. Following so far? And the width, same deal, A, and then there's a 3. So the whole width is A plus 3. And now, just like we did with the numbers, we can think about each rectangle individually. Roshan, can you tell me what this rectangle here is going to be? A square. Very good. In fact, it's not just a rectangle, it's a square, because A by A. Um, anyway, can you tell me what this rectangle over here is, the thin one, thin tall one? Uh, okay, now let's have a look carefully. You've got a height of A, right? And I'm going to use that 3, but A cubed is something else, isn't it? Yeah, it's going to be 3 multiplied by A. So 3A is exactly right, okay? How about, Vishaka, can you tell me what this lower wide rectangle is? Um, yeah, A is just going to be the one lot of A. So there's an A there. And then I've got my final little one in the corner, Enoch. Can you tell me what that one is? Three. Very good. Now, we got 360 by adding up all four of these numbers. Here, I'm going to do the same thing, but there's just some algebra there, right? So whoop, here we go. A squared, there's that one, plus 3A. There's that one, plus A, plus 3. That's the whole shape. Can we write this any simpler? Yeah. We can, right? What are we going to do? Do you want to... A to the power of 3. Ah, now, now, let's think about this. We've seen this A cubed come up a few times, right? Can someone tell me what does A... It's an abbreviation, right? What's A cubed an abbreviation of? Krishan? It's A cubed is about multiplication. A times A times A. Is there anywhere here that we see A being multiplied by itself three times? Hmm. I see A multiplied by itself twice. I see uh, three times A and just a single A, but I never see A times A times A. So I'm going to leave that A cubed out of it, okay? There is something else I can do with these two in the middle though. What would you like me to do, Louise? Yeah, this is called, does anyone remember this? It's called collecting like terms, these a's in the middle, there's three over here, one over there, so that gives me four in total. Does this make sense? Okay, let me try another one for you. Draw the diagram for this. Instead of a plus one, a plus three, I'd like you to try one that looks like this. Mm. Now, one of the weird things about this, unlike with our numbers, is that um, you know 20 is going to be roughly that much longer than 4. But with A, you're like, I don't know what A is. A could be anything. So you can draw that to be a different length. It doesn't really matter all that much. Just try and make it so it doesn't look too weird and out of proportion. I'm going to give you a minute to try and draw up that rectangle. Think about what that vertical length will be, what the horizontal length will be, and then we'll have a look at the solution together. I'll give you about 30 seconds. How are we? It's time. <laughs>
you get all of the time it takes me to rub this off and then write up the answer. <laughs> and then we've all got to pack up. Okay, whoops. All right, who's going to help me out with the first rectangle? This one, the big one over here in the corner here. 6a squared. 6a squared. You know all that stuff we spent time multiplying together? So this is what it was for, right? Um, Annabelle, can you help me out with this rectangle over here, 4 and then the 2a? Um, 8a. Fantastic, well done, perfect. Um, Baravi, do you want to help me down here? 3a. 3a. And lastly, just a 4. So this, whoop, there it is, is going to be equal to, I'm going to add them all together. Yeah, Krishan, do you have a question or a thought? I have the answer. Yeah, go ahead. Um, 6a squared plus 11a plus 4. Nailed it. Happy times. We just added them all together.